as we were listening to the proclamation of the Word of God by Kevin and then Father Bobby, it struck me of the beauty of the readings in the Easter season. They're meant to encourage us. They're meant to lift up our spirits. Because sometimes after we've gone through the beauty of, of Lenten experience and then Holy Week and Easter Sunday, at least the priest, we're a little tired, right, Father Bobby? We just, oh. But we need the encouragement. All of us need this encouragement. And so last night as I was preparing for the homily, doing a little homework, I came across this fact, and it is that the Greek word for wind, pneuma, is also used for the word spirit. So when you hear in that, in that gospel about the wind, also think about spirit. It is in this gospel from John that by doing so, Jesus links his teaching between the natural and the supernatural worlds through this word choice connecting the two realities. But just like yesterday's eclipse of the sun, at times we only have a partial understanding of our natural world. In fact, this is the point that Jesus is making with Nicodemus when he says, the wind blows where it will, and yet and you can hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. See, despite our incredible scientific and technological advances, we still struggle to understand or at times even accept the realities of our natural world that have been created by God. And Jesus goes on to say, so it is for everyone who is born of the Spirit. This next part's important. This is where in a showing of trust in Jesus and the sincere desire to learn, Nicodemus asked the question, how? How can this happen? And what Jesus says to him, if you read it, you might say, well, this is kind of an insult or a put down when Jesus says, you are the teacher of Israel and you don't understand this. What Jesus is getting at is not to be an insult, but rather to challenge Nicodemus to move beyond the purely natural in view of the world and to grow an understanding of the supernatural matters. It is also a challenge for each one of us, a prompting to open our hearts and open our minds to the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit wants to teach us about life here on earth and also a hope for heaven and eternal life. Any of us who follows, whether it be the news or entertainment or sports, can gain a certain level of knowledge. We can even become an expert in a particular field of study. But what Jesus is calling us today is to seek the guidance and the understanding about the natural and the supernatural first by using the Holy Spirit's guidance. For every one of us who's come into this world through a natural birth, through our life, has received a gift from God. But God calls us to more. He wants us to have more than an earthly life when he says, you must be born from above. And the means through which we receive the second birth is through the faith in Jesus and the action of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has taken the first step in his dying and rising to new life. It's up to us to respond. Each one of us is called to cooperate in faith with the promptings of the Holy Spirit each day. And sometimes the Spirit can surprise us. We suddenly have this, this sense of what we are to do, or even a concrete thought. The Catechism speaks to this as it reminds us that we need the Holy Spirit to move the heart and to convert it to God. It goes on to say that we need to open the eyes and the mind to be able to accept and to believe the truth about the natural world that we see and the supernatural world that is just as real, but that we don't see. Were you born from above? If you're baptized, the answer is a resounding yes. My brothers and sisters, the rest is up to us. It's up to us to heed the Holy Spirit.